One of your main uh, hurdles when you do a development is stormwater management. You want to handle it correctly for obvious reasons, so it's the, you don't have erosion, you don't have downstream pollution, and, and, uh, and many other things. So that's, that's one of your first hurdles you have to cross, and, and we had an issue here with the shape and the contours of the land. You can envision this, this section, this 60 acres more or less, was shaped like a bowl. And you're not technically allowed to run water off onto someone else's land. You have to manage your own water. Uh, and it's very hard to do when it's a bowl. You, you can't get the water to run uphill. One of the first things we did was come out to the site, look at the surroundings, uh, start to assemble information about the site, um, soil conditions, geology, uh, drainage, local drainage patterns, neighboring developments, that type of thing, to understand how we could approach the stormwater management for the, the proposed development. We always start with looking at the natural conditions on the site to mimic those as much as possible. In most sites, most of the water soaks in most of the time into the soil, and so we're trying to replicate that. Um, so we started uh, entertaining the idea of infiltration, um, and it kind of led into creating this entire community, which is 100% infiltration. The water hits anything that's impervious, blacktop, a roof, anything like that. It'll find its way to our underground stormwater basins, our, our rain gardens, uh, infiltration beds, and just basically wherever the rain and the water falls, it percolates down into the ground in that area. We don't combine it in the particular areas all together and push it downstream somewhere. Probably the most unique thing about this development is, is the sheer number and the sheer distribution of, of the stormwater BMPs and we have over 120. Most of them are interconnected with small pipes in case they fill up and they can overflow to one another. The primary ones are the things like the pervious concrete sidewalks, the porous asphalt pathways, vegetative swales with infiltration systems underneath of them, bioretention areas, rain gardens, infiltration basins, infiltration beds. There were some concerns about using porous pavements such as porous asphalt and pervious concrete on too much of the site for maintenance and other reasons and for constructability. And so in a lot of areas we have infiltration systems under standard pavement like the driveways and the quad units. One of the key design goals that we strive for here was really distributing the runoff as much as possible and essentially use every open area we could uh, for stormwater management in, in one way or another. The biggest challenge was making sure that our site contractor understood what he was building. Our builders have to do certain things in order to make the infiltration systems work. They have to understand it. Um, one of the things they, they can't do is when they build a home, they, can't, they have to be very careful about where they move their equipment and their heavy trucks because part of infiltration is being able to seep down into the earth and if you're constantly riding over that earth and packing it down, it makes the system, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, it doesn't work. Infiltration and the performance of infiltration to, to a big degree is, is the quality of the land you have. This property worked out just to be perfect. Not every community is that way. You can get into certain areas with uh, you know, different soil composition, rocky or whatever may be the case. You can't have the, the level of infiltration that we have here. So I think it'll grow more and more as, as people understand it more um, and, and certainly where the areas will allow it to be used. We're going good on this, this product? Yeah. This product over here has been, uh, been slow for us. We made so stormwater infiltration part of our uh, subdivision and land development action. ordinance, which means that a developer, when they approach us to build anything from a single family home to a development, have to tell us why stormwater infiltration cannot be used as uh, opposed to the more traditional uh, retention basins which really don't manage stormwater very well at all. They simply uh, slow the dis discharge and uh, when they're linked together, they can really uh, uh, create a, a delayed flood and do a lot of damage to the stream. And the question is now though, because there's options available to us, how do we do that? 
Uh, do we stay with our standard stormwater system or do we consider something new and innovative like uh, the infiltration systems? It's always best if you can to keep your, the water on site and, and percolate down through the ground right where it falls. You know, as time goes on, people will actually desire those types of community. Uh, and we hope to be able to use that as a marketing feature here.